Welcome to Martinsville, Virginia, one of NASCAR's original tracks. Since 1949 on dirt and asphalt, then part concrete. We've raced here on the exciting track they call the Paper Clip. Time for NASCAR Cup Series practice and qualifying. Well, what do we have to talk about today? Could it be Denny Hamlin, the Richmond winner? Could it be Martin Truex, who thoroughly dominated the race until the very end? Or, I don't know, there's got to be lots of topics over the next hour and a half of practice and qualifying. But first, welcome to Martinsville. It's my favorite racetrack. First cup race I ever came to was here. Love this place ever since. Been a lot of action here. Been a lot of heartbreak. Been a lot of celebration, including for you two guys. Well, there, there. It is not my favorite track, so okay. I'm glad you like it. So, well, let's get that I'm out of the way. I'm glad you like it, but uh, it is a great racetrack and a racetrack where you have to be precise and also have to take care of your car to keep the the radiator in the car, the sides on the car, <laughs> the wheels on the car. Uh, so, it it is a great racetrack, never one that I did very good at. Discipline. You have to be disciplined behind the wheel of this place. It is so hard. Driver, uh, uh, crew chief in a box. Go faster. You need a tenth or two here. Okay, what's that mean? I need to get in a corner deeper. Nope, that won't work. You're going to go slower. I need to get on a gas sooner. Nope, that won't work either. Got to be disciplined behind here. Let this car roll. Work on for today, right, that center of the corner, the roll speed in your race car. I want my car to roll around that corner five-eighths. The five-eighths mark to three-quarter mark around there where the car takes a rotate, takes set, and I can get back to that gas. That's where it's at. There weren't very many racetracks that I would walk down to Clint's Holler and, and say, hey, what do, what do I need to do? But this was definitely one of them that I would, I would spend the whole week asking Clint what I needed to do at the racetrack. I, let me add to that, though. It wasn't always that way. This was something that I had to learn. This was by far, I think, has there ever been a guy that showed up and won their first one? Maybe, but only a few. This is a hard place to learn, and a discipline is a, such a big part of it. All right, we're back to the uh, usual format of two 20-minute practice sessions, Group A and Group B, and then we'll move to qualifying. It's going to be a fun afternoon here at Martinsville. Welcome back to Martinsville. NASCAR Cup practice on the way. Let's go down trackside to Jimmy Little. Yeah, Denny Hamlin's had a quiet week. Nobody's talking about anything. Just kidding. We're still talking about the restart at the end of that race last week. Denny, now that you've had a chance to look at it, what is your impression of what you did and what happened, what transpired there? I mean, I feel like I explained it pretty well on, on my podcast. I actually just been on every Monday. Uh, but, I mean, yeah, I went, definitely went early. I was trying to combat uh, the advantage that the cars that were around me were trying to get on me by switching it up on them, you know, and making them have to react to me instead of me reacting to them. So, certainly... From now on, I, I texted Elton Sawyer, I said, I'll, I'll keep it in the box from here here going forward. So um, certainly like any other call or rule that NASCAR will put an emphasis on, I'm sure they'll address it in the driver's meeting and say, hey, we're going to pay attention to this and uh, make sure you keep it in the box. So we'll, we'll keep it in the box. All right. Thanks for your time, Denny. Hi. Well said. And I did uh, listen to his podcast and Joey Logano's and uh, got their points of view on it, heard Elton Sawyer in the press conference and we'll discuss it as we go through this show uh, and maybe show you a bit of video you haven't seen before. Yeah. And you tell me, Clint, I know that there's different parts and pieces of this that you could agree or disagree with, but in that situation, you're all about winning the race and, and to win the race, you know that it puts him in a box and Denny's been around this a long time that he knows if he goes a little bit early that it's probably questionable as to whether they make that call or don't. So. Um, as much chatter as there is about it this week, I'd keep it in the box if I was anybody else because they're probably going to make that call next time. 100% agree with the, la the latter part of that. Um, first part of that, yes, that's exactly what he was doing. It's like I said it on the broadcast. You know, it worked. He won. All right, here is the restart. Hamlin on the inside, Truex on the outside, and right th there, okay, Hamlin's on the gas, but right there, Truex is also at 100% throttle. So, so well, you think two wrong, so make it right. Yeah, and, and and even though it's five frames on, on the on the screen there, the, the the bottom line is Martin has to fire off that car, and he's got to be ready for that car to go early. In in, in my opinion, yep. and I think that um, 
you know, Denny caught him a little bit off guard going earlier than he probably for sure thought he was going to go. But you have to be ready to not put yourself in a box of getting beat like that. That's a good point. The difference between the two of them being full throttle was about one sixth of a second too close to call also it's, about one car length it's a ball and strike call yeah. they made the call we played on the race finished up and yeah we get to talk about it all week that's right but it doesn't change anything no nope. I'm glad that humans are officiating the sport they made the call and we race on I'm glad we have cars on the track at Martinsville <laughs> the following week we finally made it a week they got cars ever won here been oh in victory lane Got some clocks behind it. Yeah. Good looking rod. We that had, hot rod is good looking. We had Ray Evernham on uh, Happy Hour this week uh, on the podcast, and he talked about Jeff getting Jeff Gordon started here at Martinsville, and, and you talked about it uh, in the pre-race. You don't just show up here and, and go, fat, go fast. You have to work at it because it is such a rhythm racetrack. A lot of it depends on how your car is handling, uh, the things that you're fighting for that particular week. But Jeff, Jeff Gordon became really, really good at this place for a long time. He will be the co-grand marshal tomorrow cool. with Jeff Bodine, the driver who got Rick Hendricks first win at this race 40 years ago on a day in which if they didn't score, Rick Hendrick was going to shut the team down. But Harry Hyde and Bodine convinced Rick, hey, the car's ready for Martinsville. The guys want to go. Jeff wants to drive. Let's go there. And of course, they won the race and the rest is history. Big so team. tomorrow, 1,500 that's Current amazing. and former employees of Hendrick Auto Group and Hendrick Motorsports will be here. They'll all be wearing ruby red shirts to cheer on these four ruby red cars because as the 25th is the silver anniversary and the 50th is the golden, the 40th anniversary is the ruby anniversary. Oh, well, you know, the, the, the stats are, are really good here, and, and you listen to that story about 1,500 Hendrick employees showing up that doesn't surprise me, and I know it doesn't surprise you guys either. That's just that's just what Rick Hendrick, Hendrick Motorsports, Hendrick Auto Group, that Automotive Group. That's just who they are as people and how they operate, and, and they are all about the people, which is one thing that makes them so great. Said it on the quarter panel of Alex Bowman's car. They do it right. Rick Hendrick always does it right. Jamie. And Jeff Gordon, you guys are just talking about him, a big part of the legacy of Hendrick Motorsports. Jeff, it's a big celebration this weekend. What's it like for you just hearing the story, seeing these race cars with this throwback paint scheme? What does that mean to you? Yeah, I mean, it's been such an incredible 40 years at Hendrick Motorsports. I've been so fortunate to be a part of with 30 plus of them. And, you know, just been reminiscing with Rick and with Linda and so many people that have been here for many, many years and Jeff Bodine is going to be here and, you know, just that first win, how critical it was to the future and where we are today at Henry Motorsports. Never knew we were going to have the success here at Martinsville that we did after that, but uh, yeah, it's just been really special. We got 1,500 people, employees and family and friends that are going to get to be here to celebrate. The cars look beautiful in that ruby red, which is the 40th anniversary color. And uh, yeah, right now, more focus on performance and how we're going to do, but no matter what, we're going to celebrate. Thanks, Jeff. Thank you. The team then was called All-Star Racing. There's Jeff Bodine, who drove that number five. Uh, to victory. Interestingly enough, Bodine came out of the Modifieds in the Northeast. The driver who finished second that day, Ron Bouchard, also came from the Modifieds. And two of the three fastest drivers in this practice right now are the winners of the last two NASCAR Modified races here, Corey LaJoy and Ryan Priest. Well, these are great opportunities for those guys. Um, Corey LaJoy, obviously, like you said, won the Modified race here, short track racer. Ryan Priest, short track racer, and, and um, you know I know he loves coming to these types of racetracks and, and being able to showcase that that short track talent. But really, a lot of these guys in this field, most of these guys in this field, have spent a, a fair amount of time on our short tracks across the country. So this is a racetrack that's right in everybody's wheelhouse to uh, to go back to their roots. I'm glad you said that about Priest. This is a good racetrack uh, for him. Obviously, plays right in his strong suits, but. Look for him to be good. You can see him right on the pile on third place overall. And his uh, best consecutive and 15 lap averages look pretty sporty as well. He's won a pole here and led the race until he was told he could fire off from his pit box without slowing down for the speed line. Didn't recover for, from that penalty. Corey LaJoy tops the speed chart in Martinsville.
Welcome back to Martinsville. More than halfway through Group A practice, the top seven drivers on the board have all won here. Some in Cup, some in Modifieds, Truck, or Xfinity, but they've all taken the checkered flag at Martinsville. All right, looky here, Clint. That racetrack is starting to get super black, and what happens here at Martinsville when that racetrack starts to get black where, where Clint circled it, you either have to be right against the curb like that, um, or you have to split that rubber because the front end, like Harrison Burton just did right there, you either have to split the car over that rubber or you have to go right against the curb below it or the front end will take off and the back will slide and it makes it do all kinds of crazy things. But that's going to get worse and worse uh, as this practice runs on. That's where that car really loads up where you're trying to transition back to the throttle, get the wheel straight. You're pulling on the wheel the hardest right there because of that. That transition, getting the car pointed for the straight up off is really challenging. Larry McReynolds. You know, Mike, one thing I always look closely at is, is long run speed. Yeah, we look at who's fastest in practice, but ultimately who's fastest on the long run speed. About the top 10 or 12 drivers, they've already ran close to 30 laps. They'll probably get up to close to 50 laps. And right now, and I don't think this is a surprise, Chase Briscoe in that 14 car, he's 11th quickest, but he looks the best on long run speed. Kevin, I watched this race from a year ago. Your four car had really good long run speed. Maybe not good fire off speed, but good long run speed. Yeah, and that's really the characteristic that the, the Stuart Haas cars had. And I think, like you, you guys have been talking, they're, they're going to be good here. And uh, our car was, was really good here. So you know the car was pretty good because the driver wasn't very good at this particular racetrack. So uh, I would look for those cars to um, have one of their better weekends as a whole um, and not be too, or the, too, or too good or too bad. It's, it's going to be probably a good weekend for, for most of them. Well, we mentioned his teammate Ryan Priest, uh, former pole sitter here. He talks about his run. I fired off really good, just built too loose. Either break rear side bite, more so entry and exit. Other than that, I feel pretty damn good. <laughs> well, the only thing I would caution against that is the entry and the exit comment because that right rear tire will wear out and it will make the car loose in the corner. And when you downshift here into the corners, it, it is just a, it's an area that you have to be able to be good a long ways through the run on the entry. Well, go ahead and look at it, boys and girls. This 24 car is fast again at Martinsville. 10 consecutive, 15 average, wasn't really there. 20, 30 on in, like Larry Max said, on a long run. Now he's starting to show up. Second on a sheet in the 20, and second on a sheet in the 30. Who's in front of him on 30 is teammate Bowman. Yeah, and if that car is, you know, like we heard Ryan Priest talk, if that car falls off uh, on the entry to the exit, you can really make a lot of time from those uh, 50 to 80 lap mark um, as, the, as the other cars are falling off if your car is not doing those things. The way you drive this place, you know, you can't just take off like and I'm not picking on Corey LaJoy, but his car was really fast, obviously fastest in this group, but he's fallen off quite a bit on a long run. Yeah, and this car, the different, the difference with this car and the old car, Clint, is you really have to charge the corner. You've got the downshift, so the, the way that you charge into the corner, there's less roll speed. You still have to have some roll speed, but uh, you, you can get away with driving the car in hard and kind of getting on that right front and really rotating the car on, on the exit and work on the drive up off the corner. That's where our cars were so good last year at this race. We just we were able to continuously get in the corner, but we had really good drive up off the corner and not have to baby the throttle. We could just put the throttle down. You have to drive this car with a neutral balance with this track specifically. You have to keep that car not leaning on the right front too hard, not leaning on that right rear too hard. And usually if you're leaning on the right front too hard, eventually all of a sudden now the right rear starting to get loose because it gets that push snap loose up off. You burn the right rear up. One driver in the news this week is Austin Dillon. Uh, he was very vocal on the radio last week, has been for the last few weeks about strategy. So Richard Silvers Racing made a change. Uh, Keith Rodden came off the pit box to a wider role with the organization. And uh, VP of competition Andy Petrie said he talked Justin Alexander, Austin's former crew chief, into coming back up and onto the pit box uh, for the rest of the season. They have had success together. We'll see how it plays out. You had to do something. They were getting beat up pretty bad. Confidence is everything in this sport. And once that crush, it, once it's crushed, it's hard to get back. Well, Richard's not afraid to make changes. And, and Richard has always been that way. He never wants to uh, just sit there with a, 
sit on. He doesn't want to sit on his hands. He wants to be able to make changes, and, and he wants to see his cars run good. And when, when it doesn't feel right, he's just going to decide one day, and you're going to get a phone call, and he's going to say, hey, we're making a change. Here's what we're going to do. we got to get better. Yeah, care for what you ask for with him. It'll happen. Right. <laughs> Alex Bowman, best consecutive 30 laps uh, in this practice session. That's the one that matters. And that's always what I like to do in this practice session. If, if your car was even close, you, you wanted to be able to you hear us talk about this in practice a lot, but you wanted to be able to run 50 laps so that you get a good read on your brakes and your brake bias and uh, the handling of your car. It gives them a good tire wear reading it. This is this is really everything that you're looking for to talk about tonight. Uh, you got to remember those fast laps so that you can relate that to qualifying when you need to make the adjustments to your car and the balance to, to go out and qualify today because qualifying is super important. Uh, at this track and track position, but uh, this is really the best read that you're going to. It's the only read you're going to get on your car to have the conversations tonight about what you need to change and and what you want out of your car. And this is a great session for that because the racetrack was already rubbered up from the truck race um, and Xfinity uh, practice and qualifying yesterday, so they got a head start on not having to rubber the racetrack up. And and now we have a lot of rubber going down, so good race conditions. Starting a diamond like you were talking about. See him straddle this, drive up the racetrack, straddle the rubber a little bit, diamond back up, get that straight drive off the corner. Yeah, and in this car, Clint, you, you, you're going to want to drive in and split that rubber on the entry. It'll start to, he didn't do it right there, but you can drive a lane up and then have the left sides to the top of the black and then almost pull the car down. I've been watching Chad saying, I just told Artie to get on the, the one car. He was doing just that, entering real high. Obviously, as soon as we get to him, he ran the low line, but uh, was definitely doing exactly what you said, straddling it. Yeah, and that's just to get out of that rubber. And, and as the race goes on, a lot of cars will start doing that on the entry to the corner, and that second groove will get better and better. But the groove's already pretty wide, especially in turns one and two. You got to have a versatile car here. If you don't, you're not going anywhere. Well, you, you can't, can't pass. It's can't a hard pass. place to pass anyway, and you've got to be able, just like you said. All right. So, what are the challenges in that? The reason you don't want to go out there is because you got to arc the corner even more. That's something these cars won't want to do. You enter the corner with more wheel in it, and once you roll out from underneath that, you get loose on the entrance. Well, this is a great shot of Ryan Blaney, and you you can watch him, especially here in one and two. You really want to. He runs the bottom. He's going to wrap that curb for a long time. There's like six or eight inches of good grip right there. But see how far around the corner he wraps that curb and almost comes off under the rubber nice and straight. But as you go further and further into the run, you go further and further around that curb in, in wrapping that curb where the grip is. Ryan Blaney and Austin Sendrick will be in the booth tonight for the Xfinity Series race. Now you look at the 10 and 15 lap average. Blaney's not even in the top 10. He is 10th in best consecutive 20 laps but 30 laps he's in the top four. That's a tough balance here. You, you want your car to take off good so that you don't get run over on the restarts. But the further that goes into the race if you have a good long run car it seems like it pays dividend if you can get the you know a couple long runs to get up through the field because once the once the cars start falling off and the handling characteristics really start to show up about lap 50 you can really make a lot of hay at that particular point in passing cars and uh, at a much easier rate. Good racetrack for Ryan Blaney. He is definitely a favorite in my book. One of them. Top here, five for sure. Here last fall, and that final run was 168 laps. Yeah, and that's what you got to prepare for. You got you got to be able to to run a long ways into the run and and possibly make a green flag pit stop, uh, like like we did last year. But it's um, you, you got to be in tune with your car enough to know that what you're doing now might not work halfway through the race. You run around the bottom. That might not be the fast groove about halfway through the race because the tracks changed. All right, just finish this one out. Your last one here. Flags are out ending group A practice. Drivers have run as many as 55 laps in this practice session. Group B on the way. Tomorrow on Fox, week two of the United Football League. The Houston Roughnecks take on the D.C. Defenders for Eastern on Fox. Ah, uh, there they are. Those nuclear red hot dogs that everybody, it's just, it's, it's tradition. You go to the ballpark, you got to have a hot dog. You come to Martinsville, you got to have a hot dog. And folks, there's still two bucks. That's cool.
Mm. You need a dozen of them, Kevin. Yeah. Actually, I got to be up here with I'm you. Don't need, need a dozen. Yeah, of I'm going to say I'm going to need my own bathroom, too. Oh, that looks like a dozen right there. We have a winner. Jamie. No Corey doubt. LaJoy, fastest so far in practice. Well, how good did it feel? I know getting out early is key there, but how did it feel at the end of the session? Well, on the racetrack screen, you can lay a heater down, but there's also, it's the same for everybody else. Uh, it's nice, you know, after a week, you remember you can drive, because last week was really tough. We uh, had a long week at Richmond and did not run good. So you spend about six days wondering if you can do it. Uh, you know, and just talking to sports psychologists, talking to the guys. I know these guys went hard to work uh, this week. Uh, so it's nice to just come out of the box swinging uh, because I know I'm capable. I know our group's capable. Uh, so to see this game, Rich Camaro at the top of the heap for a little while. Um, we got to qualify early. Not excited about that, uh, but part of it. So we'll get a decent lap in here uh, later on and then fight like hell for 500 laps tomorrow. Thanks, Mark. Thanks, Jamie. Thanks, Jamie. Uh, Denny Hamlin, in his post-race comments at Richmond, said it was his pit crew that won him the race last Sunday, getting him out of the pits on the final stop ahead of Martin Truex. Now we'll sync up the stop times of these two cars. Watch the Truex left rear. A double clutch there made all the difference. Yeah, and that's all it takes, you know, that double clutch on the, on the left rear and you know, this is an inter interesting dynamic. Some of those pit crew members used to be on Martin Truex's uh, uh, team. It's yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, you know, the, the way that, that all that worked out and we saw the, the Truex rage after the, after the race with everything that, that happened kind of screams that maybe there's some, there's some internal things that, are, uh, that have happened there with everything that, that is going on with that dynamic. But bottom line is Denny Hamlin's pit crew put him out in front of everybody and, and he made it happen on the restart and won the race. But the pit crew started that ball rolling. And the celebrating they did after they got him out first would support every comment <laughs> you just made. Yeah. I've raced my whole life and I can guarantee you I've watched you race most of your life too. If that role was reversed and it was either one of us in that car and you got that wind stole from you that bad, I'd be in a hot, hot boy. Well, and, and you've been a part of those team dynamics before, right? That you know, too. It just all adds up, there, man. It's all so, part of it. There's so many things that happen in, inside the race teams to try to, you know, when one team's running good, they make this pit crew better, and then all of a sudden the other team starts running good and they won't take the pit crew back. And all those crazy, weird dynamics that happen uh, in the internal politics of the teams. And I know none of them on their team. So <laughs> just to just to make that clear. Hamlin's uh, crew chief Chris Gabehart by the way is a Purdue grad. Well they're in the news this week final four week. Well he definitely. He definitely um, is using that degree uh, in, a, in a very good way. Chris Gabehart is is one of my favorite crew chiefs on the on the circuit because I love his work ethic. I love how he just controls his driver. Alan Gustafson, Gustafson, uh, Chase Elliott's crew chief. I love him too. He has a, a great, uh, just a great spirit about him that that makes him super competitive with everything that he does, and he expects the same thing out of Chase. And very competitive, man. Good looking car. Love that gold on there. Yeah, and. That is uh, that is a great mobile one always does a great job with with their paint schemes and everything that that they do in our sport to promote um, everything that they have going on with the cars. They're the gold standard and that guy driving it's got a pretty good pedigree here uh, at Martinsville Speedway and on the short tracks across the southeast uh, Josh Berry. So we expect big things out of him this week and we've talked about the Stuart Haas cars running well at this particular racetrack with this next gen car and with everything that that he has been able to do on short tracks and, and Bristol and, and Richmond were, were great races for him with everything that he did. So big weekend for Josh Berry and Rodney. Berry's won here in uh, Xfinity and late models. Saw Kyle Busch last night. He was over with, with Braxton at Wake County Speedway racing Bandoleros and we were racing legend cars sitting up in the grandstands just the two of us. Nobody there. Nothing. We didn't have anything else to do, so we're out there racing. <laughs> we having a good time.
another another car that we expect to have a good weekend with Joey Logano. He's he's always run good here. We talk about the Fords a lot. Uh, Joey rebounded well last week at, at Richmond. Uh, they ran up front all day, contended for the win at the end of that race. Uh, really good on the long runs. And Martinsville's another great racetrack for Joey. So we'll see how that pans out for them this weekend. All right, the Group B drivers are in white, and Tyler Reddick now has the fastest lap of this session for Group B ahead of Joey Logano. Excuse me, Chase Elliott. We were looking at page two. Elliott gives Larson Hamlin Reddick topped page two. Well, you heard Corey LaJoy talk about the racetrack being green and, and what happens. They go out with a little mat and, and clean up the racetrack and get all the rubber that's up on top of the racetrack. And when they go out there, that, that racetrack has more grip. So you see the guys in this group are slower uh, than, than they were in the first group because of that. And I always like to be in Group B, Clint. We, we talk about this a lot. And, uh, group B just gives you a little better read on the racetrack and especially going into qualifying. Especially on a track like this where you're laying as much rubber down as we are. I agree with that wholeheartedly. So you won't see the upfront speed, but I do look. You get over there and look at your consecutive 20, 30 laps on on. That's where I think it'll kind of equalize, and you'll see that. Chase Elliott, again, these, uh, these Hendrick cars, 40th anniversary, pretty sporty so far. About 12 and a half to go in Group B practice. Ryan Priest talking it over with Drew. Hendrick drivers at Martinsville Speedway. Nine victories, Jeff Gordon, Jimmy Johnson. Four for Darrell Waltrip. One win each for Bodine, Earnhardt Jr., Elliott Byron, Bowman, and Larson. A lot of success as they celebrate the 40th anniversary of that first win this weekend. Chase Elliott has the fastest individual lap in this B group, 20.16, set on his 11th of 29 laps. Let's check with Jamie. Well, Mike, Brian Priest was the pole sitter last year. Once again, some good speed, fastest in five and 10 lap average. How much fun is it to be back at this short track, Ryan, and know you have some speed again? Well, yeah, obviously, I love short tracks. It's where I've cut my teeth, right? And uh, really, it's just been a process because not being able to have more than 20 minutes of practice, you really can only do so much to your race car each week and not feel like you're getting outside the box. So this week, we kind of did something different from what we normally would. And obviously, it's paying off. This is this car feels as good as when we got the pole and led those laps. And you know, if we keep working on that, hopefully we can run up front and lead some laps and maybe try and find ourselves in victory lane and get a clock. We'll see you in qualifying. Thank you. Thanks, Jamie. Ryan Priest for Stuart Haas. Joey Logano for Team Penske. Team Penske running their 6,000th race this weekend across all series. And Logano is sixth at Group B with a fast lap of 2029. Larry Mack? Yeah, he's run 33 laps, Mike, and his fall off does not look that bad. But I was very interested in what he told Jamie Little or what Paul Wolf, his crew chief, told Jamie Little at Richmond last week. You know, every racetrack we go to is different, but if you're turning laps anywhere, you're learning. You're putting pages in the notebook. And Paul Wolf told Jamie Little they were part of the North Wilkesboro tire test a few weeks ago, and they felt like they learned something that helped them at the short tracks. I go back two years ago when he won the championship. They had gotten off. They went and did a test, a Goodyear tire test at Homestead Miami Speedway, and as we know, they got things together in the playoffs and went on to win the championship. You're always learning something no matter what racetrack you're at. Right, Larry, their fall off is only two to three tenths a second from their fastest lap. Josh Williams back in the 16 this week. Probably practicing pit road. Well, he slowed down quite a bit, so maybe not. But this is a tricky pit road with the with the corners. I would suggest uh, at least running your car around the corner one time just to make sure that you understand what that that speed needs to be and this is one of those places where you need to get all you can on pit road track position so important Justin Haley and his gold wheels <laughs> all the brickware cars that's right I uh, had gold wheels they had uh, a couple of trips through the inspection lane here 
to get ready for qualifying and practice. And Ricky Stenhouse carrying the uh, bright yellow and orange this week on the 47. Well, we love those Sunny D colors, Mike. You can see them. <laughs> it's good for an old guy to be able to, to pick out the car. What a, what a great looking car. Yeah, but having to remember week to week who's wearing it. Well, that's the other story. Very true. Often it's Josh Berry. This weekend it's Stenhouse. Clint, who you like in here? Well, I've been looking down on the, on the sheet here, just lap after lap after lap. This five cars really fast. Um, I like those SHR cars. You know, I think Priest and Briscoe are really fast. Logano is ultra steady. I mean, steady Eddie. He was in the 40s for a lot of laps there in a row. 50s, early 50s. Very consistent, very steady. But I think those Hendrick cars right now, if I had a collection of, of who I thought was going to win, probably have Ruby Red on them. Now here's Eric Jones right behind Logano. He has been searching for speed and just uh, one lap ago ran his fastest lap of this session. Well, you see him running down Joey Logano, and a lot of that has to do with the amount of laps that are on the tires, the 12 lap. 11 12 lap tire difference there Joey will just move over and let him go so that he can waste as little time as possible to continue his run and not impede Eric's. It's the courtesy that you get here at Martinsville typically in practice and that goes away in the race Mike. Let's check with Jamie. Well Josh Perry back out on the racetrack right now he's turned 26 laps. He had just come in and when he brought it back in NASCAR officials came over and looked at the roof patch on the left side. It had come off completely. You see it right there. It flipped open. NASCAR told Rodney Childers, the crew chief, they've seen it before. Maybe he bumped it with his helmet when he got in. They're not really sure. But you see the car chief, Cheddar Smith, right there, beating and banging on it a little bit. They think they've got it secured, Mike. Hope so. Three and a half minutes to go. There's Rodney. It's Rodney. We've got his son, Gavin, up in the booth with us today, teaching him. Bad habits. Teaching him bad habits. <laughs> and how much work his dad does in the pits and we how little work we do up here. I tell you. Don't tell anybody. You ask me, Mike. I've got a new sheriff in town. The 11 car of Denny Hamlin. Very, very fast. You know, our consecutive goes to lap 30, but I, I pulled up another sheet that's uh, north of that. And he's the only car that's consistently in the 30s. He got some 40s and 50s on other cars, but he is put together a string of 30s and into some early 40s very fast very consistent especially on a long run. Well look at the difference in his start this season to last season the haircut aside look at how many laps he's led average finish and of course the win column. Well I would definitely find last year's haircut um, but other than that his his stats look look really good compared to, to what they were last year. A couple more years will be bald and it'll be uh, it, they might get him one might get him at championship. Well, I can tell you I, I'm, I've, I've headed down the headed down the bald path so well, can, he's getting better headed that direction you were well you timed out. That's funny. Kevin. You know his uh, teammate Ty Gibbs just had <laughs> about three laps where he couldn't get down to the bottom of the racetrack in the corners rolled around in the high groove and then said OK enough of that pulled it into the pits. Well I think a, a lot of that too is you you want to start. Two minutes to go. What's the problem there. All right we didn't do something right here because it's track of the track and I got something loose. Yeah, copy. Well, look at the tires real good, too. Problem sometimes the cyclone, we just got build up on them. We'll check it. I right, checked the left front, boys. We got something going on. Something that's a little weird. Hmm. Huh. It is hard to, to cycle the tires here with with the build up and take him back off and, and so it's it can definitely give you a read but usually these guys are pretty good at knowing when there's something wrong with their car uh, because they drive them so much. Didn't they just have a steering rack issue. They did. Yeah that was at Bristol had the steering rack issue at Bristol and, and actually they they told us on the on the um, report at Bristol that it was something to do with the sway bar. Oh. So. But you see these cars on the entry to, to the corner right there. Um, Carson Hosvar's car as it goes over that concrete patch you really see the left front bounce especially in the turn three the last lap you see the left front tire bounce and that really gives you an indication of just the transition from the asphalt to the to the concrete 
See it bounce right there. This car's probably hitting the ground. Don't you think, Clint? Yeah, that's the other. I was going to say that that's it's the other part of that equation. If it gets down on that uh, splitter in the front, starts bouncing as it transitions from the asphalt to concrete. Now, are you still hard under braking when you make that transition? Better not be. Well, you will be in this car. Just, you, but you have to. You have to start bleeding. You, you're going to on the straightaway. You're going to have your most brake pressure, where you initially let off the gas, and as you go in the corner, you have to start bleeding that brake off because if you don't, it'll lock up those tires over the concrete, won't it? Yeah. So you got to you got to start letting the brake pressure off as you go into the corner right here. There's some cones on the outside wall, but you see the nose go down. As soon as you get to full brake pressure then you have to you have to bleed a little bit off all the way down into the curb and then as soon as you transition off maybe a little bit of roll but right back to the a little partial throttle. Brad Kozlowski searching for speed as we finish up group B practice 2041 uh, his best lap. So there are the fastest in practice in group A and B. We will turn things around and get ready to qualify. And any time that you get the, the Earnhardt Junior Nation behind you uh, wanting to be mad at you or whatever the scenario is, and they, at that point they were mad. I didn't do anything wrong. I just beat their guy. Right. <laughs> right. But I got home that night, and there were uh, Dale Junior fans waiting in my driveway. Oh, actually, what? For me to go in my gate. Yeah, they were waiting. What were they going to do? They just there to taunt you, <laughs> scream at you, tell you that. Where were you living at the time? How did people find out where drivers live? I don't understand this. Yeah, that is yeah. wild. So they were they were waiting in my driveway uh, for me to get home so that they could yell at me. You never know what you're going to hear on Happy Hour. No, it was uh, that was 2011 won the cup race here past Dell Jr. at the end and he's got some he's got some pretty passionate fans and they were waiting at my gate when I got home. Why were they, they mad at you? Well you they were mad even, because I passed pass. him. I know but they were mad because I passed him and they're just they're just very passionate Clint. <laughs> well let's see any short track any track in the Carolinas or Southern Virginia or Talladega you beat Dale Earnhardt Jr. You better bulk up. You, you're going to need Percy to get home after uh, that. Deal. Uh, Percy is our guy with the 40-inch uh, biceps. Don't tell him we our have a security, security guy. guy. They don't uh, need to know we have a security guy. I, but he I'm, has a security guy. I, how do you know it's that. for him? I just, I need a driver. <laughs> <laughs> for more than one reason. And a babysitter. <laughs> a babysitter, He's that's my for babysitter. Sure. He for got, sure. Clint was late today, and he got to the trailer. Today? And, but, and he's late every day. Pretty much every day. So this is the booth, we, we do have to babysit this is Clint. not late. <laughs> anyway. Just comes rushing in the last also, second with his hair on There's fire. also cars on the racetrack. <laughs> Look at that list of awesomeness. Yeah, Rusty fun. Wallace, pretty pretty good here. Some modern and Davey some vintage Allison, uh, flags. Awesome. Yep. Wood Brothers right down the road from here. Stewart, Virginia, half an hour away. Great museum. Have you been there? Yes, I have. Awesome. Keep selling it. Keep selling it. Yeah. <laughs> Jamie. Chase Elliott won this race back in 2020 and fastest in that second group there, Chase. So what'd you learn about your race car and uh, does it give you optimism for qualifying in the race perhaps tomorrow? Yeah, I hope so. I thought our um, Unifirst Chevy was uh, definitely different than it's been here the last couple trips, which I think is, um, I don't know if it'll be good or bad tomorrow, but uh, it definitely drives different. So we'll see. That, that was our goal kind of coming into the weekend just to um, kind of make a departure from where we had been the last couple of trips. Just thought we had kind of gotten stale uh, up here. So, yeah, I, I thought uh, there were a couple things that I really liked about it. Obviously, having a good starting spot is going to be huge. I mean, uh, anyone you caught, it was whether it was a guy that's won a bunch of races or not, it was really difficult to get by. So just uh, taking care of that right retire and and uh, having a good qualifying effort will be a, be a big deal. Thanks, Chase. Yep. So the biggest thing you gain here from qualifying is an early draw for a pit stall. How key is that here compared to other tracks? Well, pit stall one here is not as key as it is at other tracks because the, the timing line is so far away. It's actually pit stall two. So you, you but you, you want to be in the position that puts you in a spot that you can have a clean opportunity to either maximize your timing lines or just a clean stop for your pit crew guys. Personally, Clint, I'd rather be on the straight 
uh, line of pit road here on the front stretch than in the corners because I always had trouble picking up my pit boxes, but I have a hard time seeing. No, uh, you're spot on. It's blind around there. You can't see around your A post or through your window net. I mean, you literally can't see your box, especially if you're coming around a car as well on those corners, especially. So pit boxes nine and 10 at the end of the front straightaway before the curve with an opening between them. That would be your preference? I think so, yes. If, if, if you get that opening before the curve, it gives you a good shot in. The only, the only issue that you have there is if somebody picks in front of you because of the, the way that the speed lines are, people want to do that to take advantage of it. I think it was 12. Uh, we were back here and actually they put a timing line in because of it. Brian Patty found it and I passed Jeff Gordon on pit road. Did it like three runs in a row. I looked past him pulling into my box. He whined about it, got a rule changed. Well, we talk about the famed Wood Brothers from Stewart, oh. Virginia, and here they are with Harrison Burton yeah, at the wheel. You saw Harrison Burton get loose off a of turn four coming to the white flag. That is the absolute worst thing that you can have happen at this racetrack, coming to the white flag and getting loose off a of turn four because it hurts both laps. We'll see how it goes for him. 2027 on lap one. Mm. Still loose off. Yeah, you hear it spinning the tires, and this is going to be a lot like last week. These early cars are not not going to have the, the best situation because of all the rubber on the racetrack and the more cars that go, the more it's going to pick that rubber up and clean the racetrack up. Zane Smith next. The qualifying order set by a metric, which includes last week's finish, last week's fastest lap, and the point standings. Yeah, you see Zane having trouble too off of turn four, just kind of sliding through that rubber, but his car is bouncing on the entry to the corner. Over the over the concrete down into the into the entry of the corner. Two drag strips connected by two U-turns. That's how we used to describe this place. Well, don't let it fool you. The, the two ends are different. The way that the concrete is different. The way that they poured it um, because of it's just different. The, the length of of how long the concrete is on the entry to the corners and the, there's a dip into turn three over the concrete patch and it's always felt like I could drive into turn one a little bit harder. Uh, but the way that you drive these two ends is very different. I know they look the same. All that what I heard you say right there is timing. That's a that discipline aspect that I was talking about at the top of this show. Timing at this place is so hard to piece together. Yes, it's a paper clip and yes, both ends look the same, but they're drastically different, aren't they? Yes, and the, the timing in this qualifying session is trying to not drive it into the corner harder. At most places here, you want to drive in a little bit right. harder because you can. You can with this car, and you, that's where you make the most speed. Is driving in, you can go up the hill a little bit, like um, Hemrick did right there, and get away with it in qualifying. You hustle the car a little bit. You got to get the speed on the entry to the corner and get as far around that corner so that you can put the throttle down on the exit. Corey LaJoy had the fastest individual lap in practice, and already Zane Smith has gone faster in qualifying than any practice lap today. You know, look right there at the left side tires on that seven car, and that's one of the biggest differences in race it, race practice and qualifying is air pressure of tires. When they were getting out there making those long runs earlier, they were down around eight, nine, ten pounds in the left side tires and maybe around 20 in the rights. Qualifying, you put about 28 to 30 in the rights, 14, 15 up to 16 in the left. That's the big difference in the air pressure from racing to qualify. Man, did you see that exit of turn four, Clint? I had a really funny joke about that tire, but I'm going to leave it to Chris Myers for Sunday. Look at that thing. Look at that left rear tire. Looks like a dragster, doesn't it? That's what Mike said. Two drag races. Tire proves it, Mike. Ryan Priest. First of two laps, and he is fastest, 1996. No surprise. Good lap. Good racetrack for him. Going for more. Quite a bit in the green, too. Oh, so, hit the curb. Got a little greedy getting into the corner. Overdrove that entrance like you were talking about. Yeah, and what happens when you overdrive the entrance or carry too much speed right there? The, the left front tire wants to start to try to lock up, and the next thing you know, it starts to bounce around. and. Then you get a little off track trying to chase the brake pressure down into turn three, and then you hit, he just barely touched the curb. All right, bumping will begin uh, with Austin Dillon. 
past five, move on to round two. Oh, just what we just talked about. You you drive into you got to drive into the corner hard. But as you go over that bump into turn one, where it goes from asphalt to concrete, you have to release the brake pressure. It'll do just that right there. Lock up the tire. Second lap is faster for Dylan. He's third, 2001. It's all about timing, Clint. You got to brake hard and then get get the brake pressure right and release as much as possible down into the center of the corner. And by the time you get to the center of the corner, you in qualifying, you're going to want to roll a little bit and almost let that front roll fast enough to chatter the front tires. And right before you think it's going to rotate, you want to roll right back into the throttle. You got to be able to put the throttle down. I never could get it together for qualifying pretty much anywhere, but especially here. Uh, I would always overstep that line. And it's so hard to do if you understep it. There's nothing, no worse feeling as race car drivers getting, you know, done with qualifying and realizing you undergrowth the car. So you push hard, attack the corner like you're talking about, step over that line, the car rolls out from underneath W, you, your lap is shot. Austin Sendrick goes to the top of the board, 1991. That bumps Harrison Burton. Well, you see Todd Gill on get loose off four getting a wall, right? Right coming to the green flag. And see a lot of these guys struggling off of turn four. And I always felt like there was a little bit of a dip uh, late center in turn four there where the car would almost get over on the right right rear tire and start sliding. We've seen a lot of these guys uh, slide the tire, but that's going to be the difference in who gets the pole and who doesn't. Who can put that throttle down off of turn four? Gilliland, see him sliding bad. Second by three one thousandths. And above Corey LaJoy. Still in the green here. Well, that's obviously the bubble to fifth. For sliding around as much as he was, that 92 is a pretty good lap. Well, I had this I had this conversation last night with Keelan. In these two lap qualifying sessions, and Martinsville is another uh, situation like that. You, the cars to go fast, it's probably still just not going to feel good, and you just have to make it make it go fast. And sometimes it's going to slide and do things that it, that, that doesn't feel right. But you got to trust the speed and, and your markers and everything that goes with making a good lap. No, I really wrapped the bottom good. Both curbs oh, slipped up same thing. a little bit there. Still trending good up off the corner. Marching back up to almost a tenth. So he's in the fast five by four one thousandths. Bridges up off of turn four again. Turn four is really, really slick today. Uh, coming, coming to uh, the, the checkered flag there, you saw Noah slide the back of the car, but you, it's a timing of rolling into the throttle and being able to put it down as fast as throttle, but being in the right spot on the racetrack and not in the rubber. We are halfway through Group A qualifying, nine down, nine to go. This car official talking with Josh Berry's crew there. Still yeah. messing with that roof hatch. Yeah. Chase Briscoe. All right, that, there you see Chase Briscoe coming off of turn four there. That's going to be the spot that, in my opinion, Clint will determine the pole. Who can get the throttle down the best off of turn four? He hooked the bottom good. Chase always runs really well here at Martinsville. Seems to always be able to make speed and really edgy situation like we've been talking about with the car sliding and wanting to lock up tires. He always seems to be pretty good at that. <laughs> Top of the board. Yeah, you see him bounce around a little bit there on. Whoa, oh, goodness. Got to the gas too soon. Bumps Noah Gregson out of the fast five. Man, that cost him. Yeah, that lap's over. Maybe. Yeah, that was to fifth, so. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a good lap, 87. SHR, good to see them boys up front, them Ford Mustangs. Here, Blaney just bury the throttle right there. Very busy racetrack for the drivers. Everything happens so quick here at Martinville with the, with the shifting and there's a lot of upshifts and downshifts. Nice. Here it hit the ground. Never mind. Somebody opened the door in a booth. <laughs> <laughs> That's your coffee they're bringing you. There we go. Up to second Fixed on lap it. two. You think he's yes. 
gave up that first lap to be good on the second. No, I mean, he, lot. we were in car with him, so it was hard to tell if he missed somewhere, but I would say he missed somewhere. But I, I really think that there's more to that second lap if you can get all the dots connected to put a lap together. Somebody's going to do it. Uh, that bump Zane Smith here is Alex Bowman. Second with an 88. Well, you see those cars not want to have the rear stick to the racetrack as they get right past the center of the corners. These guys want to throttle up. And one thing that you have to do here, everything happens a little bit faster in, in uh, stayed right where he was in qualifying. So you have to open your hands a little bit faster when you try to put that throttle down harder. You got to open your hands a little bit faster to try to open the wheel to let that thing drive a little bit straighter and set that right rear tire a little bit quicker than what you did in practice. And it's really hard to get the timing of all that right. Chastain with a 2012. It's two tenths. Now you see the back of that car slide out in the same spot that everybody else has been sliding. I think that this. goes into that timing category. I think it's picking up the gas a little bit too soon, getting a little too greedy on the throttle and not being able to stay with it all the way up off the corner wide open. Yeah, the I think it comes back to him. I think what, he, what needs to happen is it needs to be just a little bit of partial throttle and then put the throttle down to let that right rear set. Which is exactly when we were riding along what Blaney did do. Chastain's lap identical to Austin Simmons. There's Bubba Wallace. This car really likes the wheel to be opened up it's a big difference if you don't have as much wheel into it to make the to the left to be able to open that wheel up uh, Joey hand taught me that as we were training for road course sessions and it was really a light bulb that went off and you just got to pick a spot on the exit of the corner to drive as straight as possible to to get those hands open as soon as possible now Wallace has bumped Cindric he bumped Cindric instead of Chastain because of car owner points Chastain is ahead of him and that's Wallace the big goes to the top. 79, business is picking up, boys. That was that, he waited a little bit more. When he got to the gas, he stayed with it and just continued to drive away from him on exit. And that'll walk Wallace into the fast five. Chris Busher here. Oh, kind of blew it down there. So getting in the corner. In. And you have to be able to drive the thing in the corner to make speed. See how he squirted the throttle there in the middle of the corner, watching that ghost car drove to Chastain and then gives it up on the exit, getting to the gas too soon. That's that discipline about this place. It's challenging, folks. It entices you to go in. All right, I'm going to go faster. I need to get in the corner harder and then to pick up the gas sooner. Two things you can't do here. William Byron's car was really straight off of turn two on this first lap, Clint. Little wiggle off of turn four. And as a driver, wasn't, it didn't, didn't stick that lap. Got loose again. He's gonna need to figure something out. Three and four actually slid up high again. Try to dime in the corner. It looks like it's a little tight, rotating back to the throttle and then snaps loose. Eighth for Byron, he will not advance. Not a good lap. Every lap, the driver is going out of the pits and goes into turn three and four. The front end's going to slide, and you got to trust it coming down in, in here to turns one and two. But this is a constant process of, okay, what do I have to do the next lap? That corner felt like it was too tight, too slow. Wherever uh, I can drive it in further, uh, then three and four felt good. Okay, now here's my plan going into turn one. I'm going to drive in a little bit deeper and let the break off a little bit sooner and see if it sticks. Such tight laps here. Briscoe's second at a 1987 and fifth is 1991. An 87 to a 91. Bell jumps up to ninth, but he will not advance. Martin Truex. I mean, look at the difference between fourth to seventh right there. It's amazing.
Truex against Chastain. One of them will advance, one will not. It'll be Truex right in the middle of that tight group of cars. And he is one and done. That might be a key factor, what you said right there. Only one lap for Truex. Well, it's definitely not going to hurt anything, that's for sure. Bubba Wallace paces Group A qualifying to move on to the final round. Here are the Fast Five in Group A that will run for the Bush Light Pole here at Martinsville. Two Toyotas, two Fords, and Alex Bowman's Chevrolet. Now look at the difference in the racetrack here. I heard you talk about it, Kevin, and I told the guys, said, let's go back and look at it. Look how much less, this is earlier, with the rubber right after practice, and then this is the track now. Way less rubber. Top is before practice, or before qualifying. The bottom is exactly where it is now. A lot less rubber equals more grip. And that'll hurt those guys that went out earlier in the first round than it will the guys that have to go out earlier in the second round. But better good. fix your matrix. Yeah. <laughs> Pricey pay. Well, it's the it's the rich get richer, right? You, you do good one week, and, and you're up in the points, and it just makes it tough when you when you dig a hole and don't have a good finish. You got to have a good finish. See left front tire locked up. So this is David Starr making a one off start for Carl Lawn's team. Jamie. Well, Ryan, but we're getting hit in the head by this tent right here. But Ryan Blaney genuinely happy after that qualifying run. Did you think you weren't going to advance to the second round? No, honestly, I, I didn't think it was good enough. Um, here, let me get that for you. I didn't think it was good enough to uh, to transfer, honestly. And, um, you know, fortunately, we've made it by a few thousands or whatever. So uh, nice we get another crack at it in our advanced auto parts Ford Mustang. Uh, I think we can make it a good bit better, right? Uh, I thought we were a little bit off. And like I said, lucky to, to make it and have another go at it. So we'll see. Um, track took more rubber in practice than I thought, which is a positive. You know, it was kind of cold today and the track got pretty dark, so that was good. Guys are moving around. So uh, I think we have a decent idea what it's going to do tomorrow. Um, yeah, just happy we get another go at it and see what we can do. All right, after qualifying, Ryan Blading will go up to the booth for the Xfinity Series race. He will not be wearing a bow tie. That'll be Austin Sindrick joining oh, him, Mike. Oh, slash. <laughs> I, was glad Thanks, to see that, I was glad to see that Austin loaned his bow tie to Larry last week or the week before. Looked good, Larry. It was Easter, man. That was my Easter suit. Oh. Was that Austin's or yours? That was mine. Okay. All right, Josh Williams, 2018. Here's Kaz Gralla. For the 2035. And second lap is faster. 2017. Justin Haley. Oh, see that left front tire lock up. So easy to do here. And he got loose. That's a, that's a messy first lap. See him trying to lock up there again. Touching the curb a little bit. Oh. Actually hear it slide. Yeah, and, and a lot of that has to do with probably the setup and, and the things that, that they have going on with, with the car and the heights. and You just... It makes it so tough from the driver's seat when you can't drive in the corner hard enough like everybody else because the tire's locking up like that. But you definitely get in those, those windows. But Justin managed it pretty well. Top of the board for Haley. Here's Ricky Stenhouse. Oh. oh. I think one of the swap ends on him big time. We don't get the wheel hop we used to get with the last generation car, but those downshifts, they have consequences, don't they? Yeah, and as we see Stenhouse go go for a second lap, you just see that still thing. Loose in. Yeah, still loose in the corner. And sometimes that can be the, the brake setting that you have gone to during practice with as much, you want to still want to run as much rear brake in the back of the car as possible. It used to be the balance of not having the 1992, that's a pretty good lap for as ugly as it looked in a turn one. <laughs> that's pretty sporty. Rookie Carson Hosevar. 
see Carson run up the racetrack and back down to the bottom on the exit of the corner trying to get a good run towards the green. Going back to what you said with brake settings, that's exactly what I saw too with Stenhouse. It looked like it had a lot of rear brake in it getting into the corner. Just trying to lock those rear tires up so the left front like we saw Haley a couple prior. Second for Osobar. Ooh. Went for it, did he? Yeah, and that's, I remember watching Carson's first lap here last year, and, and he's just so ambitious uh, to, to be, he's a gasser. And he's so ambitious to go out there and just hang it all out, and that's just not something that you can, it's a balance in how far you can do that here at Martinsville and get away with it. Michael McDowell up next, and he's somebody that really gets in the corner aggressively. Good qualifier these days. And you see Michael at the racetrack, he got in the corner hard, and that thing wanted to start stepping out, and he had to walk the car up the racetrack to not do what Stenhouse's car did. He just, he walked his up the hill to, to keep it straight and wound up a groove too high. He's certainly getting in the corner as hard and aggressive as anybody. There it is. Locked the tire. Locked up. Look how he drove away from Williams in 15th there. He's getting it back though on exit. To stay alive here, but it's not going to be the lap he wants. Bouncing, getting into three, maybe <laughs> sideways off four. Not going to be happy with this, is he? No, there wasn't anything good about that lap. Nope, second lap was slower. John Hunter Nemechek. And when you drive it in too far, Clint, like Michael was doing right there, uh, we see John Hunter go through the infield. <laughs> <laughs> On the ghost car. <laughs> On the ghost yeah. car. Let's, let's not do that. Yeah. Track limit violation. Uh, Skip Barber Racing School there. Uh, Skip from New England, Harvard educated, raced in Formula One, open wheel Trans Am, and then founded the racing school that he no longer owns, but bears his name. And they I have trained a lot of drivers. I went to the Skip Barber Racing School sure. at Laguna Seca one year in a Formula Ford. I think I was uh, 15 or 16 years old. It was fun. You can check fourth. Did you ever go to a drive-in school play? Bondurant. I was yeah. just fixing to say, everybody either went to Skip Barber or Bob Bondurant. I mean, it was one or the other. We, none of us really came from back then. In those days, we didn't all came from circle tracks. So it was a dirt track in my background or asphalt, late models and stuff in yours. We weren't road racers, and we needed somebody that knew how to road race to help us out. You probably should have won a couple more times, maybe. I won. Eric Jones, fastest. Probably as many as you did in half the time. <laughs> oh, look, now he's getting defensive. <laughs> Dog bite back. Look, he stood up. His record speaks for itself. <laughs> Jarek Jones at the top of the board. That's a great lap. And your Suarez, a little wiggle off turn two. That is a huge lap from Eric Jones in that 43 car. You remember, Bubba Wallace was the only one in the 70s in the first group, and the 87 was second to Chase Briscoe. So in 84, pretty sporty. Eric Jones. Suarez has bumped Nemechek. Clint, that, oh, good that Suarez car was pretty straight everywhere. Suarez moves up to second. Eric Jones fastest halfway through Group B, round one qualifying. John Hunter Nemechek and is that Matt Kenseth with him looking at the data? Or is that Trevor Bain? That's Matt. Look at that, that smile. That's definitely Matt Kenseth. <laughs> Mischievous smile. It's definitely Matt Kenseth. And I, hey, I put that boy behind the wheel. Get one of these cars out for him. He'll drive it to the front. We saw Kyle Busch get really loose coming to the green flag and loose again off of turn two. And as a driver, you got to decide, all right, what do I do now? I don't have as much rear grip, so I got to make the speed somewhere else in the corner than get back to the throttle so soon. 
Well, what you're going to do is straighten the entrance up, right? You're going to straighten the entrance up and not be arched as much getting in. Probably diamond the corner a little bit. If you lose off, try to diamond it up and get rotated in the middle so you can straighten the exit up as well. And I think that's what Kyle did. A lot better. And he has bumped Haley out of the fast five. Look at the exit speed. Top of the chart, Kyle Busch. Josh Berry. Second fastest bumps Carson Hosevar. Well, you see him walk that car up the racetrack on the entry to turn one on the second lap here. This track is definitely picking up speed in a big way. I think the rubber that we were talking about, some of it, and I think the shade, the sun going down on this racetrack behind the grandstands is helping as well. Wow. Very even faster, 1970. All right, Ty Gibbs. Remember, a 79 was fastest in the first group. Well, the other thing is happening, you see it right there, the shade on the racetrack. You need a lot more out of the second lap. Ninth on lap one. Really diamond in the corner. Needs about two tenths. Up the hill. Sliding up the, in the middle of the corner. Drop he gets it. A little bit. Third fastest, 1983. Well, that's the thing we talked about earlier, Clint. This is this is a part of the weekend where you can get away with driving in too hard and sliding up the racetrack and diamond in that exit of the corners. We see the left front lock up really bad on Brad Keselowski right there. So Stenhouse is bumped. Suarez on the bubble. Kozlowski 2004 means about 12 one hundredths here 16 one hundredths. This is a track and this is probably going to win some people over and lose some people over but I really wish we could run these cars on this a track like this without shifting. I think it would change the name of the game. I think it would you know when I think of shifting I think it, it crutches a lap if you're tight you can downshift get the thing rotated and get back up the gas it helps that lap it's an aid to everything oh that was messy all right third for Keselowski bumps Suarez Tyler Reddick and this is where the lock-ins will begin for round two yeah you talk about shifting Clint a lot of these manufacturers have got it to the point where they shift off the rev limiter you don't even have to let off the throttle to, to shift down the straightaway. So your upshift will actually just, you'll put a tension, put tension against the shifter and it'll just fall into gear when it hits the rev limiter. Exactly, just keep perfecting it. And everybody's got opinions, I certainly have mine. And that's one on a track like this, I wish we could figure out how to make go away. So really, 10. It doesn't get any closer now. Oh, he picks up to sixth, but that will lock Josh Berry into the final round. Here's Joey Logano. If he goes to the top of the sheet, you may see him try to just run one lap. Remember that first group, Truex was the only one on the lap, but it's going to take more than that. If he is first or second, he will lock himself in to the final round. He's going to need another lap. Remember, there's he's the fourth car left, and I, I think one of those cars, if Chase Elliott after him, Denny Hamlin, or Kyle Larson, I love what I saw at a Truex giving them a, that opportunity to do that. It's an option on the table. Logano to second, locks himself into the final round. Man, this track's picking up, Kevin. Knocks out Eric Jones. I think some of it has to do with the conditions. I think a lot of it has to do with the rubber just continuously getting cleaned up off the racetrack as well. He 
was so close. Chase Elliott sixth. Needs one one hundredth. To make the fast five, he needs seven one hundredths to lock in. Top of the board for Elliott. He moves to the final round. Wow. That's a shot fired. First car in the 60s. So it's Denny Hamlin and Kyle Larson now against Kyle Busch and Brad Keselowski for the final two spots. Be a huge win tomorrow on Sunday. You put that nine car Chase Elliott back in victory lane. NASCAR's most popular driver. It's been a minute. Yeah, and if he wins, you know where we're going, right? Where we're going. Hamlin to fifth knocks out Keselowski. Don't you remember the promise that we made if Chase Elliott won? What was it going to be? Oh. oh, we get to go to the pool hall. That's right. Yes. But we're not honking the horn. No. We're going to sound it's, the siren. Yes, baby. you are. There you go. Hamlin to second. And he is in. That means the final spot on the fast five will be Kyle Larson or Kyle Busch. This car was extremely fast in race trim. If he can make this bubble, you might see this car pull off. It's close. This car is extremely fast everywhere, Clint. Seems to be. Bubba Wallace fastest in Group A would not have made it in Group B into the final round. Larson needs one one hundredth of a second and a little more. A really good point, what you said. It just tells you, I mean, what is it? A matter of 20 minutes, maybe? That sun going down, the rubber coming off the racetrack. Business is picking up. And the last spot in the final round goes to Kyle Larson, top of the board. Yeah, and those, those last several guys did a great, great job of not locking their tires up on the first lap and doing the things that some of those cars did to really build to what they needed for the second lap. The field is set for the final round of pole qualifying, led by Kyle Larson. Here are the drivers that will advance to the final round. Note that the fifth place driver in Group B, Joey Logano, quicker than everybody uh, in Group A as the track cooled and the shade came around. Truex <laughs> is the only one with one lap on his tires. All right, Jamie. Well, Mike, Chase Briscoe's been so good here. Top 10 the last four races, all with this new car. But things are a little different. Aero package is different. The body's different. How did this car compare? Uh, I would say it was definitely a little more out of the racetrack, I thought. Like, it was a little freer in, a little less drive off. So kind of what you think coming here it'll be like. But, yeah, you never really know until you get here. So that was kind of the hard thing, I would say, in practice, just deciphering, you know, is our car a little bit worse or is the aero package and you know truthfully I feel like from a speed standpoint we were about where we were before so that's uh, encouraging from our 14 group doing a really good job and even Stuart Haas as a whole you know to have two cars in the top 10 again is, is really good so yeah so far so good thought we had a good long run car too which is nice just need to uh, maximize our starting position here for sure in this final round well the good news is you are making it to the final round so things are good at the track things are good at home yeah. you just made an announcement on Twitter want to share that with the world yeah I'm, uh, I'm definitely extra motivated now I got two more mouths to feed so yeah me and me and Marissa are expecting and twins uh, there is not much in life that compares to the doctor telling you oh wait by the way there's two uh, so that is uh, was quite the unbelievable experience me and Marissa kind of just drove home the whole time just I don't even think we said a word to each other we we're just in shock so yeah we're looking forward to it. The due date's in October, so it's going to be a big change in our household, but one that we're looking forward to. So, yeah, looking forward to obviously growing our family and, uh, you know, Brooks being a big brother, so it's going to be a lot of fun. Well, congratulations yeah. to both you and your family and for having good speed in the car. Yeah, thank you. See if uh, we can put it all together. All right, Mike? All right, congratulations <laughs> to the Briscoes. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks. Oh, look at there. Oh, that's that's his motor. Is that home. his bus? Yeah, that's his own motorhome. <laughs> it cost me 15 <laughs> it's bucks. Definitely is. Yeah, I'd actually buy it for him. Ask him to put it in there. I can't believe they didn't burn all those things. Burn they, them. You think they actually sold it? Oh yeah. Or what, did they give that away? What you don't know is my motorhome's right in front of that one. <laughs> <laughs> all right, four Fords, three Toyotas, and three Chevys will run for the pole in Martinsville next. Martinsville Speedway dates to 1949. It was a dirt track 
built in a swale between two hillsides with the Norfolk and Western Railway running right next to the backstretch. 151 races when they wave the green flag on Sunday. There's Clay Earls, Fred Lorenzen in Miss Virginia with the very first grandfather clock That's awarded cool. here. You know where that clock is today? I'll tell you tomorrow. I have to wait for tomorrow? Yeah, you gotta wait. What, what's cool about those is where do they build them? Well, they build them right down the road, three miles from here in Ridgeway, Virginia. Thank, at least you can tell us that. We'll have to wait for tomorrow for the rest of the story, folks. Ah, wait till they bring the cold drag by on the way to the sea. Hope they honk their horn all night, Clint. Now, when David Pearson Child raced honk. in the latter years of his career, and he was sponsored by Chattanooga 2, they rented the train and loaded up with race fans in Roanoke, and Pearson drove the locomotive to stop right here on the backstretch to bring all those fans to the races. Now, that is activation. That's yeah. finest and something. If they can figure that out, I'm in. I will drive that train. Absolutely. A fun, that'd be a fun train. That's what we'll call it, the fun train. People like you won't be on it. Are you, are you talking to me? That is exactly who I'm looking at. Are you saying I'm no fun? Also exactly what I mean. OK. <laughs> well, there you go. All right, here's the order of qualifying for the final round. Who do you got, Kevin? Oh, this is such a tough one. Um, Your old car's in it. Yeah, let's. I'm going to go with Josh Berry. I like it. I'm going to Martin Truex. One lap on his tires. Got beat up last week, Martin Truex. Jamie? Well, Josh Berry's already winning with this paint scheme. It looks absolutely gorgeous in person. And Josh, you qualified on the front row at Bristol the last, or I guess, two short tracks ago. What do you think you have here for this second round? Yeah, I feel good about it. We've had a good car. Uh, the car was good in practice, and it, it felt good right there. I think that was the first qualifying attempt for me here. So I feel like I can do a little better job this time around. Uh, just Rodney and these guys have done a great job. The car's really solid. Looks great. Mobile One, 50th anniversary. Uh, the gold looks awesome, so we're going to try to hopefully put him back on the front row. That'd be fun. All right, he's got to win in Xfinity, but first time in the cup car. And by the way, the roof hatch is what we were talking about earlier. They got it all good. It's secured. He's ready to go for round two. Thanks, Jamie. Ryan Blaney will be first on the clock. We'll go Group A drivers, slowest to fastest from round one, and then Group B drivers, slowest to fastest. Watch his hand clamp. See him preload that shifter, and it just falls into gear. 1991 in round one for Blaney. Pretty slick, huh? I've never seen that before. That's exactly what he's doing. I remember, Robbie Gordon was the first one that I ever heard do that in Pocono a long time ago. He was actually our teammate at RCR. And then we got back Monday morning. And I said, did you do what I think you did? He said, yeah, that's pretty cool, huh? He waited till that thing hit the rev limiter and it had his hand on it and wait. And as soon as he hit the rev limiter, it fell right into gear. Also a good way to blow it up. 1981 on lap two. Okay. So that's a tenth better than he ran in the first round. I don't know, Kevin. It's the only car that has one lap on his tires. I don't know if that's an advantage or not. We're going to find out right here. Martin Shrex Jr. He was out of that first group. Another thing he's got to overcome is just trying to figure out how much grip he can get away with. The track right. has definitely picked up he in that way. He definitely made a big adjustment on, on this lap uh, in turns one and two with the roll speed and everything that he had. Trex had an 88 in round one. This is a 75. And the goal is always just try to go the same speed on the first lap. Well, I think that was what was hard for him, I, right. you know, <laughs> that changed. So Truex picked up 13 one hundredths. Here is Alex Bowman also with an 88 in round one. And it's like we talked earlier. Every corner is another a learning session so that you know what you can do. And it's just really minute adjustments, whether it's brake pressure, when you release the brake, how fast you roll into the throttle, when you put it to full throttle, just understanding what that grip level is so you can get lap two right. It's even more in the shade, particularly down here in one, pretty much full shade in one and two all the way around. An 83 for Bowman. So that's a five one hundredths faster than round one. Didn't get quite the pickup that Truex and Blaney did. Chase Briscoe had an 87 in the first round.
like how he wrapped that curb right there. It's better than turns one and two. That's an 83. Similar pickup to Bowman's. Ooh, see the car just kind of buck a little bit through that through that little dip right there, but just missed it. Gets to a 76. That's 11 one hundredths of a second better. And here's Bubba Wallace, who had a 79 in round one. Didn't get off the corner very well for this second lap to pick up. Yeah, I think like you said, Clint, I think a lot of these guys from the first round are learning what that grip level is and what that roll speed and everything that they need to do for the second lap on the first one. Which is hard. I think it's picked up a good almost two tenths. For these guys, for sure. Yeah. Buried the throttle right there. Better. Really good angle off the corner. Had it straight, low and straight up off the corner. Top 71. The yeah, that was a great exit to turn four. Bubba Wallace picks up eight one hundredths of a second from round one. He is on top of the board. Martin Truex had the biggest pickup from the first round. Truex second, Wallace first, five drivers to go. Bubba Wallace is fastest after the Group A drivers have run their second round, 19.719, a pickup of eight one hundredths over round one. As the track continues to get cooler and shadier, we move to Group B and Joey Logano. Logano had a 72 in round one. The thing I liked about Bubba's car is just how smooth the ride was, Clint. Well, you know how important that's gonna be come tomorrow, especially on long runs. Don't want that platform of the car moving around. Larry Mack analyzed Wallace's fast lap and said his strong suit was the middle of the corner between one and two. Good exit by Logano right there. But why is that important? Momentum is key on something like this. You don't want to stop and go. You don't want to slow the car down and then have to. I always explain it like a, pulling a boat out of the water. The more on plane you can keep it, the better off it'll be. But that, that 22 car in the, in the um, 45 car or the 23 car and the 22 car looked totally different. The ride in the 23 was super smooth. 22 moved around a lot. A 76 for Logano was a pickup of just three one hundredths of a second. Here's Josh Berry. Berry had a 70 in round one. Well, I don't look for these cars to have that big pickup like the Group A did. Went for uh, it. But I do think that if they can run the same lap, obviously, we had some 60s in this group and you probably said they'll come from it. to him pretty good good exit yeah. got a lot of it back yeah he just shot it into turn one a little bit too hard and got himself up the racetrack a groove and a 76 for Barry pro stock race and 76 with the four to Logano to the Barry 76 for the five that's a horse race a little slower that's a horse than race than round one race. Have you don't even know have you ever been to a drag race Denny Hamlin with a 67 in the first round don't want this guy to have any more confidence I don't think the world can handle it, but this competition certainly couldn't. Oh, loose in. 82 on lap one. Rolling that middle well. Hamlin with a 77 to finish up. One tenth slower. And round one, Chase Elliott ran a 66 in round one. Man, these 70s are the name of the game, aren't they? It's all in that balance of getting off of turn four and getting into turn one as hard as you can without having the car jockey around, but it's a fine line. Fine line between first and eighth right now. Look at that, one tenth, exactly one tenth. It's hard to explain just how minute that is from the inputs in the in the wheel, the throttle, the brakes. Elliott jumps to second with a 75. Great lap for that nine car. 
That's that eight, man likes it. Eight one hundreds off what he ran in round one. So Kyle Larson, 64 in round one. If he falls six or seven one hundreds, he could still win the poll. Look at this. A lot of green. This car is extremely fast. Slipped up a little bit on exit. Gave it all back. Right close. So close. Second with a 73. Two one hundredths separate Wallace and Larson. He had him smoked all the way to the exit. Got a little bit greedy with the throttle and gave it back. Couldn't keep the throttle down. Still in the green here. Rolls that middle well. Look how fast it rolls the middle. Got a better exit. Larson with a 718. Wow. Wallace a 719. One 1,000th one of a second decides the Bush Light Bowl. 718 to a 719. <laughs> that is also pro stock numbers right there. Yes, it is. Jamie? And Bubba Wallace still standing here, kind of shaking your head. One one thousand. That's that's the bad news. The good news is you're still starting on the front row at Martinsville. Of all people, <laughs> B. Larson by a thousand. So they're good. He's one of the best. So uh, proud of our team, though. So that's good. What do you call it last week? Karma <laughs> still getting him. There is your front row at Martinsville for tomorrow's 400 lapper. We'll talk to Kyle Larson after this. Last week, lap and a half to go. Who gets together? Going down the front straightaway, Bubba Wallace and Kyle Larson bringing out the race's final caution. And they had a discussion after. <laughs> Bubba saying didn't turn you on purpose. Well, look what just happened. <laughs> Jamie. Kyle Larson gets the poll. I just talked to Bubba and he goes, of all people, is this a little re sweet revenge? I don't know. Last week was pretty sweet revenge. Us finishing third and <laughs> him having a rough pit stop. But no, that was uh, honestly a bit unexpected. I mean, I knew he'd be good. I just, that second lap didn't feel that great. So it was just enough though. So uh, really cool to get this 40th anniversary uh, Hendrick Camaro uh, on the pole. And um, it seems all four Hendrick cars are really good too. So hopefully it's a, uh, a good day for, for the organization and um, can, can be celebrating for Rick and Linda and, and everybody who's been a part of this organization for the 40 years. So um, really excited about it. Number one pit stall is going to be great. So just got to uh, execute a good race. Congratulations, Kyle Larson. You see Linda Hendrick on the door right here, Mike. How about that? 18th career poll for Kyle Larson. He and Joey Logano have won multiple polls this season. And for Hendrick Motorsports, their 249th career poll. Well, one thing that I took out of the, the Netflix documentary, Clint, was uh, she expects to win. Yes, 100%. Yes. Man, I love this lineup. They're all up front. You want stars, folks? Every one of them are up front. Chevy Toyota, Chevy Toyota, two Fords in row three. Byron, he's the only one that surprised me, to be honest with you. And Bell. Bell back there, you'll keep an eye on them. They're going to be coming to the front. Who could forget Ross Chastain's finish? I really thought Noah, Noah would run a little bit better. Busher back here in row 15. That's going to be a struggle for him. A long day, but anybody can, if anybody can do it, it's him. And that's the lineup for 400 laps tomorrow on FS1. Tonight on FS1, race day, 7 p.m. Eastern time. And then our Xfinity Series race following immediately. We'll see you tomorrow for 400 laps at Martinsville as we congratulate Kyle Larson, Hendrick Motorsports, and Chevrolet winning the pole at Martinsville.